G'day Ziggy D here and yes, as you can see, a change of scenery again. I'm here in my new house and the new internet has finally been hooked up and it is amazing. This is the first video I'm actually making from this house just, uh, besides the uh, little uh, bit of phone camera work we did earlier. And uh, maybe if you guys are interested in seeing like a walkthrough at some point I could do that. But I really like to get a good camera before I can do that. I don't really like using the phone footage all that much. But I'm here, I can start making videos again and more importantly I can start live streaming. So I wanted to uh, sort of kick off the first video of this new house with a uh, look at the new uniques that came in the recent patch, the uh, summoner centric patch. Although it was a summoner centric patch and some of the uniques are pretty summoner oriented, we also have a few other really cool uniques. Overall we have five uniques and uh, at least four of them are really insane and one of them is kind of interesting. So overall pretty exciting stuff, so let's jump straight into it. First up we have the Solaris Lorica Copper Plate, level 17 Copper Plate. Now, this has been called the Mini Chevrons because essentially it is uh, filling a gap that's been requested, much requested and much uh, wanted for, uh, for a very long time now as a stepping stone for people that wanted to, uh, you know, be able to make themselves to immune to play low life builds essentially without a Chevron's wrappings. But previously to this, you know, Chevrons is the only way to make yourself immune to, uh, to chaos damage without taking the CR keystone. This is very important if you want to have low life because if you don't take uh, CI, you can sort of keep your life, you can reserve some of it with auras and then get yourself to low life and get a lot of different low life benefits and things like that, which is impossible with CI because that takes you to one health, which means you're one out of one, you're always at full life rather than low life. So this Solaris Lorica is like an entry uh, a stepping stone and entry point for people that want to play low life builds but can't yet afford a Chevron's, which is pretty reasonable for most people because Chevron's is very, very expensive. So basically we have some, you know, some kind of just average sort of stats on there, uh, some strength, some armor, uh, the increase in light radius, kind of a thematic thing here. And then we have Chaos Damage does not bypass energy shield. So this means any Chaos hits you take go to your energy shield rather than your life. So you can have something like 100 life in uh, Merciless and not get killed instantly like you would if you w weren't using this item. Prior to this, people who didn't have a Chevron's yet would sort of just farm with low life very carefully in zones where they knew there was no chaos damage and if an exile showed up, they'd instantly log out because that exile might have chaos damage and could instantly kill them and that's uh, pretty nasty and hardcore. It also has minus 10 chaos damage taken, which is not really too big a deal. It's, it's, it's not bad, it's not bad. It's gonna uh, help reduce the amount of damage you take to your energy shield and it's gonna work well against sort of like fast lighter attacking ES hits, uh, sorry, chaos damage hits, but it's not a huge sort of thing. So let's have a look at the flavor text here. Give me neither ha uh, havens nor solace, they are for the weak and frightened. Instead, light the path to greatness so that I may begin my bright pursuit. Pretty cool stuff. It's a pretty cool item and I, I haven't seen the 3D art for it yet if there's any, but uh, if there is I can see it would be a pretty good one for transmogging there. Okay, so next up we have Alberon's Warpath Soldier Boots, level 23 Soldier Boots. Another lower level item, but a uh, pretty, pretty cool one and pretty powerful one for some new, some sort of niche builds here. First up we have adds 1 to 80 Chaos Damage, we've seen in other uh, item slots where like having like 1 to 80 Lightning Damage on gloves and things like that is very powerful. Having these on slots where they normally can't roll like on boots is pretty, pretty powerful as well. However, the difference with this item and those items, they're elemental damage and can be scaled, whereas it's much harder to scale Chaos Damage. So this 1 to 80 Chaos Damage, although it's pretty nice and it's going to add a bit of extra damage that can't be reflected and uh, is not resisted by most mob types, it's um, not a huge thing. So don't, don't overvalue that 1 to 80 Chaos Damage, but still pretty cool stuff. We have an uh, extra armor stat there, so it has, has a decent amount of armor. Also some Chaos res Resist, which can be pretty hard to get. 9 to 12 isn't too bad to have there. And it's got 20% move speed, which is kind of the minimum to have on boots to make them somewhat sort of viable. So that just makes, makes these at least reasonably attractive boots if you want to use them in your build. Next up, plus two to the maximum number of skeletons is a kind of a weird one. It's not one that I really pick out on these boots when I look at the rest of these stats and think about what sort of builds would use this. So I'm not really sure what builds using skeletons would use these boots, but it, it's something there. And I guess if nothing else, it's a bit of a thematic thing there. Uh, the com combination of strength, skeletons and chaos damage Pretty interesting stuff, but here's the real kicker one. 15 to 18% increased strength. This is huge. Uh, if you're stacking a lot of strength in a build, like an Iron Wheel build, like an Iron Wheel Freeze Pulse build, like Morse's build, who's very excited about the release of this unique, 
then uh, this is going to give you a huge amount of strength. It's possible to get like a thousand strength on a character if you're stacking strength. These sorts of builds are really interesting. They try and pick up all of the strength nodes around the tree and they stack a ton of strength on their gear. And then a huge increase in strength like this, an actual percentage increase in strength, works out to be like over 100 strength easily. So uh, very powerful stuff. And that alone actually equates to something like 60 to 80 life. So just from the strength alone, although there's, no, there's low life on these boots, these actually can have life on them if you are a very high strength build. Not to mention the huge increase in damage you're getting on an iron wheel build. This is iron wheel, the uh, support gem that allows you to scale the damage of spells using your strength. So uh, very, very powerful for any iron wheel build. I can see these getting used a lot by those. And decent boots to boot. Decent boots to boot. Interesting stuff. The only obviously trade-off trade there is that the 1 to 80 chaos damage doesn't benefit them at all. And I don't see too many iron wheel skeleton builds either. So it's kind of all over the place. It could fit into a few different builds, but the really powerful one is that increased strength. Alberon walked among the accursed and they welcomed him. Alberon's Warpath, Soldier Boots, pretty cool stuff. So next up we have Dying Breath Coiled Stuff. This is the one that I find is a bit, a bit eh, it's pretty interesting. The uh, whispers of the dead carry the wisdom of the living, if you are willing to give your life to listen. So, this is kind of like a, a bit of a, a stick that you would give to your support character. It's got some curses, some aura stuff going on, and you know, increased cast speed and stuff, and mana and stuff that supports that. So, we've got a bunch of 18s here, 18% chance to block, cast speed, maximum mana, radius of auras, radius of curses, uh, increased damage taken, which is a negative sort of, this is a drawback for the staff, which I don't know if this staff really needed much of a drawback because I didn't think it was that amazing, but it's something there. And it kind of makes sense thematically if you're playing a support character and carrying this around that uh, you're trying to avoid as much damage. You're hanging back a bit, supporting the rest of your party. And this makes you a bit, bit more of a stronger themed support character. So nearby enemies have 18% increased effect of curses on them. This is uh, the most powerful stat on this, uh, I think. But also the uh, nearby allies gain 18% increased damage is also really quite powerful there. So the nearby uh, enemies have 18% increased effect of curses on them. Is only You're only able to get this through this and uh, quality curse on hit, I believe, are the only ways to get that. So that's a pretty significant significant thought sort of thing. And when you're enfeebling enemies and then increasing the effect of enfeeble, which is already a very powerful defensive curse, this makes this much, much more powerful there. And it's going to obviously increase any other curses you're using. So if you, you know, you're like a quad cursor or something like that, casting four curses on enemies, these are all increased by almost one-fifth in terms of potency. So very powerful stuff, and the increased damage is just like a flat increased damage across all of your party members. Very powerful stuff as well. You just have to be a bit careful when you're holding this stuff because you will take a fair bit of extra damage. The 18%, almost one-fifth extra damage, is pretty significant. So you're going to want to hang back a little bit there. So uh, somewhat interesting. Not doesn't seem super powerful, but definitely an item that a support character can carry. Next up we have Skull Skullhead Secutor Helmet, level 36 armor evasion helmet here. It's got some pretty nice stats on it, it's got uh, maximum life, max mana, decent amounts of those, you can get up to 70 on both, a uh, decent amount of increased armor and evasion as well. But uh, here's where you know it comes in, we've got another summoner item here, that, that staff could be used by a summoner, or a support summoner, that sort of thing, but uh, this is the really big theme summoner one for this build, uh, for this patch at least. Uh, minions have 10% chance to block. Now, uh, the only other way to get chance to block on minions, as far as I'm aware, is through using the Necromantic Aegis and carrying a shield and they get your block chance. So uh, having an extra 10% chance to block on your minions is going to make them much, much more tanky. The increased armor is uh, another one, again, that I feel you can only get through Necromantic Aegis. I haven't played a summoner before, but this is basically what I understand is the only way to give armor to your minions. 300 to 350 armor isn't a huge amount, but it is a nice extra buff on top of anything you're giving them from your shield. Then the minions regenerate 2% life per second is very powerful. I know pretty much all summoners feel that uh, vitality is a mandatory aura to run. I don't think this will take the place of vitality, though it potentially can. If you want to take a little bit of a drop back in terms of regeneration and just run this, maybe you can sacrifice vitality and run a different aura or free up a bit of mana or something like that if you decide you can't run vitality in your build. Otherwise, it's just going to stack with vitality and uh, along with the block and armor, going to make your minions much more tanky. All that was left of the Iron King was his bleached skull, yet it was all the Iron King needed. Also, another really cool looking item, if it is one that uh, can be transmogged, it's got the 3D art. I can see that happening there, so uh, I recommend checking that one out. But uh, this is going to be a high demand item for summoners, I feel, right off the bat. And then finally we have Snakebite, Assassin's Mitts, level th uh, 58. 
uh, energy shield evasion gloves and these are amazing there's so much potential for these gloves they're insane I have no doubt that they'll be somewhat expensive and they'll see a lot of use as well kind of uh, inspiring me to actually make a build themed with this and a bunch of other items as well so we have evasion a high amount of evasion and a decent amount of increased life so right off the bat they're pretty viable gloves to wear you're not sacrificing too much in your build to run these next up this is where things get pretty interesting 2% increased attack speed per frenzy charge. We've seen a bunch of other items that do things like this, like Blood Dance and things like that. So uh, this is adding extra synergy. So if you're a really big frenzy stacking character already and using some of those other items that take advantage of frenzy, then this is going to help you out even more. Increased accuracy rating per frenzy charge is pretty interesting. I don't feel it's one that's going to help too many people, but maybe if you're like a dagger or claw build that isn't using resolute technique, maybe going crit, then the extra accuracy is going to help. It means maybe you can sacrifice some accuracy on the tree probably don't have to get any accuracy on the tree and just keep your frenzy charges up all the time that'll give you the accuracy you need so saving a few passive points there potentially which is pretty interesting stuff 10% reduced frenzy charge duration per frenzy charge so uh, if you're stacking you know eight uh, frenzy charges you're getting 80 percent reduction which is pretty pretty uh significant you know but i think this is something that pretty easy to work around if you're going sort of fast killing things pretty reasonably or generating frenzy charges pretty quickly with certain other uniques then uh, you should be able to keep your frenzy charges up it just kind of sets a bit more of a faster pace for you to keep up in order to use these gloves and that's pretty cool the uh guy who created this item was actually talking in the reddit thread about this item and said that you know he feels that it'll still be quite viable you still have a decent amount of time but he wanted it to sort of encourage people people to go a bit faster, although still be hardcore viable because he plays hardcore and that's why it has that life and evasion. And here's the final stat, when at maximum frenzy charges, so whatever your maximum is, could be 3, could be 6 or something like that, then uh, attacks poison enemies. Now poison uh, originally was just a uh, notable passive on the uh, passive skill tree, but recently was added to another item, Beano's Kitchen Knife. And this has obvious really strong synergy with Beano's Kitchen Knife, which uh, allows you to spread poison around, damaging uh, like big AoE groups of enemies by spreading the poison around, and also giving yourself extra regen. So this is going to help you there, and uh, gives you that extra poison there, so you don't have to get it through another source. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, there's also some other potential synergies with this. Like I'm thinking like, uh, there's the Oro Sacrifice Sword, which gives you frenzy charges when you ignite things. And obviously, if you're igniting things, you're going to be trying to scale your burn damage. This has poison damage, so you can scale both of those in one go. Kind of uh, poison, ignite people, and things like that. And there's the obvious synergies with Blood Dance and the Blood Rage combination too. So lots of really cool stuff you can do. This frenzy characters are starting to look very, very attractive. There's tons of different cool stuff you can do with them. So overall, pretty cool patch. A bunch of really cool items in here, and some pretty interesting ones all around. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed my little look at and analysis. Uh, make sure to uh, follow my live stream, by the way, because I'm going to be starting to test live streaming today, testing settings and things like that. And then uh, from tomorrow, pretty much onwards, I'm planning to start like a full-time live streaming schedule. So uh, I'm pretty psyched for that. I've only live streamed twice before, and I've lived vicariously through other people's live streams. And it's always been so fun, like a huge blast for me. So I'm uh, really keen to do that. I'll put a link at the top of the description below. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.